Good morning, dear fellow pilgrims. Today I managed to leave before 7 am. And I was the first one out of the albergue. I was the first one. That means I won't be the last one at the finish line today. Of course, I expect Karl to scare me from behind at some point. And the South Koreans, they are also very fast. Let them come. I'm already on my way. I'm in a good mood. But I haven't had breakfast yet. That's coming. But I'm the first at the wine funk as well. Because today I pass a monastery whose neighboring winery gives free wine. This is a long tradition. Should be fine with me. Yes, as always in the morning. I search of course, first of all for the Camino. There I stood around a bit, looking for it in the area, did not know where to go. Then a nice Spanish woman came around the corner and asked if I was looking for the Camino. And then she showed me the way. There I wanted to tie again to the thought from yesterday. There are people who project things onto you and take you as a scapegoat for their dissatisfaction. You need some, someone to take that role of, of a scapegoat and sometimes it's your turn. Here on the way, that hasn't happened so far. The people are all warm, friendly, they share more or less the same spirit. Now I don't want to waste time with talking. <laughs> I, I want to get some miles done. Let's go. A moderate climb past some interesting buildings and then along a main road. Finally takes me out of Estella. Good morning kids! I hope you are well and you slept well. Always remember, if you feel bad, it will pass. You can feel good again. You can go every way. You can come to the end of the world. Everyone of us can do that. Your dad is trying to demonstrate that right now. By the way, today's destination is called Los Arcos. According to legend, under 20 kilometers. That's, that's, that's almost like a day off. And on, on top of that, a free never-ending source of red wine is waiting for me. I'm on it. So how does it look, dude? Shall we take some pictures? No, we're going on for now, aren't we? Huh? Where are you going? Let's see if it works. Okay. 
Chin, chin. Chin, chin. Prost. Eh. Uh, zum Wohl. Eh. <lacht> Viva México, cabrones. México. Eh. Ya se la saben. <lacht> Oh, this is where they all gather now? Here come the next ones already! Yes, this wine is a very good wine. Once you have drunk it, it simply flows down the throat. There is a bit of a surprise. What an unexpectedly cheerful start to the day. As soon as I stood at the fountain, various pilgrims came little by little and the place filled up for a spontaneous drink. By the way, I see the young man from Mexico more often on the way. Unfortunately, we have a language barrier. But in the meantime, it was translated to me that what he says there into the camera is to be understood as some kind of froggy humor. Viva Mexico! On we go through a forest and then open country. The wine spring was incredible. I could fill my whole a 0.5 liter bottle and so then had fun for a few more hours. Yeah. However, my feet unfortunately did not get lighter. Time for a break! On day six it happened. I just got lost for the first time in this little town there. I have not found the Camino. Then I wandered around a bit. My smartphone had no battery. I couldn't look up where I was. But then I found the way again.
then it became exhausting again. I was thirsty and hungry. My feet were burning. Then I discovered a sign that said something like, in two kilometers uh, there's something to eat, stay calm, or something like that. And indeed, there was a food truck run by an American family in the middle of the fields. I meet the Mexican guy again, treat myself to a cold drink and eat a huge cheese sandwich with egg. That was delicious. Afterwards, I give my loved ones some good thoughts. Here is a little message to my family again. And then it goes on. You can tell. Just to the last hour on the Camino, it gets hard. The feet hurt. After all, we've done some walking. At the Fuente del Vino, there was a 100 kilometer mark. And now I'm in Los Arcos. It's just fine. It is bright, it is warm, and the environment seems more and more dry. Will I be the first in the albergue? I have seen only the South Koreans. No Carl, no Mike. They are surely still behind me. I arrived at the albergue, Casa Austria. This was once founded by Austrians. Now everyone speaks Spanish. You can even get a massage here and a filled vending machine with cold drinks. And I treat myself right away with this cold stuff, I can tell you. Well, no, I, I mean, it's... I started a pump blower. I did a thousand sit-ups before I started. Everybody's different, it doesn't matter. Carl and Mike are already waiting for me downtown, drinking wine. How, how, how could they be faster than me? Uh, uh, how could it be? Uh, let's just continue with the recap. Day number six on the Camino Francaise, the way of Saint James. And I just found a nice park where I can record this video, near a small church. And this video is actually take, taken already on the day seven, because yesterday it did not work out so well. But about that in a moment. I left early in Estella, alone. There I got lost a bit at first, then a nice Spanish woman helped me and showed me the way. The first big stop was, of course, the winery at a monastery behind Estella. And there I was also alone and I have tasted the wine. It was surprisingly good. It was, let's say, a bit of a strong wine and it came out properly. I thought maybe you get only two or three drops. No, I filled the whole bottle with it. Then many other pilgrims gathered familiar faces, Koreans, Japanese and this one Mexican guy. And we toasted them, first of all. Then I let them all go and trotted after them. Then we went through open country. You could see very, very far. Every now and then it was interrupted by a small piece of forest. And no matter through which forest I hiked, each forest had something special for it. It was really beautiful to hike there and look at the individual trees. It was really a pleasure and it was really an easy walk. Since the first day I set out here, I have been thinking about the concept of home every day. Where is one actually at home? When the home you were used to is no longer there, perhaps through your own fault or the fault of others, you had to leave that home. And perhaps every one of us knows this as well. At some point each of us sets out from our parents' home out into the world and builds a new home. But where is one actually at home? Where do you feel? Where, where does it feel like home? And these thoughts kept circling back and forth in my mind. From the place where one has home to the place where homelessness prevails. And then also back to the moment of hoping that somewhere maybe a home is waiting for you. At some point, and then it is probably part of this way, the Camino, that this is then also reflected to you. 
here on the way. Because at one point I stopped for a rest, and suddenly a single older man came up to me and saw me sitting there. He came right up to me and said in a somewhat challenging, challenging tone, Well, tell me, my boy, where is your home? And I, I was a little perplexed at first and thought to myself something like, how does he mean that now? Then I spontaneously thought and told him, uh, my physical home was sometimes there, sometimes here, mostly in Germany, but my spiritual home is mostly where I typically am. Then he looked at me and nodded his head. Ah, yes, he said. I like that answer. I like that one. And then he moved on. Yes. Those are the things that happen here on the Camino. Yeah, then it was uphill and downhill every now and then. And I want to say something else. As romantic and as this way is, and as beautiful as it is, and as good as you feel when you are out in the fresh air all day, above that here is the first section is definitely the effort. It is tiring, that's true. Especially if you are not that trained. It's hard. On your muscles, on your bones, on your mind. Especially in the evening, when you try to fall asleep. An incredible number of images and impressions pop up. And until they pass by and you fall asleep, it takes some time. And I have spoken with many pilgrims. They experience similar things. Also, that they uh, wake up at night every now and then, and then can't fall asleep for quite a while, and then they do sleep again. Many pilgrims tell me that. Yes. I then reached Los Arcos, relatively early at 2 p.m. or 1 p.m. I took a lot of breaks though, of course. Our accommodation, the Casa Austria is called, I believe it's called like this, was once initiated and supported by Austrians. In the meantime, it is run by Spanish people, but uh, you can still find many German words on the walls. I met two Germans there as well, and I thought, I got there before Karl and before Mike. I sit down on my bed and thought, hey, I'm the first. Then I look down and suddenly I see things from Karl on the bed next to me. And I thought, he's already here. I didn't see him at all. I didn't see him. <laughs> Why is he already here? Unbelievable. He beamed himself here. So I took a shower, sorted my stuff, went to the next bar, and who did I meet there? Carl and Mike, and many, many other pilgrims. And then we spent this afternoon, we did, did a little shopping, filled up our supplies in the supermarket, water, etc. And that's uh, why I didn't get to the video yesterday. By 7 p.m. we were all in bed. By 8 p.m. we were almost all asleep. At 2, 2 a.m. I was then awake again. Could not fall asleep again. We managed finally to get up at 5.30 in the morning. At 6 we left. This is turning out to be a good idea right now. There was day 6 from a stay to Los Arcos. Tomorrow we continue Los Arcos to Lodogno. Probably a hard tour. Let's see. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow night. Thanks for watching. See you next time. You know, it's just so it's such a peaceful here, such a beautiful place. Here we stay forever. Right? Ah, no. Ah, yeah. Now I'm going on. I feel I have to.